everybody. This is going to be fun. I'm going to tell you about angles in and around circles. Um, there's a couple things I want to make sure that we know ahead of time. I made a note about those right here. Before we even start talking about the stuff we're about to do, and, and, and let me just flash this to you. You're going to find angles all over the place in circles, outside of circles, formed by secants and formed by tangents and radii, tangents and chords. Angles just not at the center, some central angles, some angles that are neither central angles nor, nor inscribed angles. Lots of angles around circles, and you're going to figure about those things today. But before we even start that, we got to recognize, what about angle A? What kind of angle is angle A? Well, angle A is a central angle. And how do you measure it? It's the same as the arc it cuts. Got to know that ahead of time. What about this angle Q? Anything special about it? Well, it does have its vertex on the circle. That makes it be an inscribed angle. So what? How do you measure it? The measure of angle Q, one half the arc it cuts, and it cuts this arc PR. So it would be arc PR divided by two. The other thing you gotta know to understand this lesson well is this angle, and I talk about it a lot, is an exterior angle on triangle ABC, and this angle would equal those two angles, these two angles added up, whatever they may be. You put in some numbers for those two angles, see about this one, and subtract from 180, find out about that one, and this angle is equal to those two added up, and it makes life easier when you know about it. Now let me show you a couple of other things, please. With the notes that you can take from this page that is available here at Canvas. Measuring angles in and around circles. Let arc AD be 40 degrees. And CB is 100 degrees. We want to find out about angle CEB. CEB, this angle right there. Now you might think, well, same as the arc it cuts, but you know, I think these two angles are congruent, and this one can't be 40, and that one would be 100. It turns out that this angle will be the average of those two arcs, but let me show you why I think so. And if this paper kind of pushes us in that direction, show DB and find the measures of angles D and B. Let's show DB. When you do that, I can find the measure of angle B. Angle B is an inscribed angle and it cuts this arc that is 40 degrees. So therefore angle B must be 20 degrees. An inscribed angle is one half of the arc it cuts. Well, what about angle D? Not congruent to that one, but it's another inscribed angle. And look at the arc that it cuts. It is 100 degrees. Therefore, angle E would have had to have been 50. Now, what you got to catch is, this angle that we care about, this angle I'm wanting to figure out about, angle CEB, is the exterior angle on this little triangle that I'd like to shade for a second. Therefore, that angle is equal to these two angles added up. It's got to be 70 degrees. The measure of angle CEB. That exterior angle of the shaded triangle is equal to the sum of the remote interiors, 50 and 20, therefore 70 degrees. But, how does this angle relate to these arcs? Is it the average of them? Add them up and divide by 2. That's how we can get that angle. Then we can just practice that thought for a second. Garrett tells me that arc PS is 70, and arc QR, yeah, that one, is 150. Give the measure of angle QXR. That's the one with the arc on it, huh? Not a central angle, not the same as the arc it cuts, not an inscribed angle, not half the arc it cuts, but look at its vertical angle partner, the arc angle, the arc that it cuts, this angle, these angles, equal to each other, are the average of those two arcs. Add them up and divide by two, the arcs that it cuts. So 70 plus 150 divided by two. And that's 220 divided by two, 110 degrees. That's the measure of angle QXR. And you want to remember for the rest of your life, an angle just somewhere 
within the circle, inside the circle, is the average of the arcs it cuts. How do you measure it? There we go. Here we get a generalized statement about it. How would you measure an angle formed by two chords? And this kind of angle, that's not necessarily the center of that circle. I don't think it is, but that's an angle formed by two chords. And so it would be the average of the two arcs. I would say arc AB plus arc CD divided by two. I can know other arcs and find other angles, but that's how I get angle one. Now, I'm going to take up the idea of an angle formed by two secants. We're changing gears a little bit, going to this picture. There's a couple of segments of, a, of, of two secants. And they're going to tell me ahead of time that arc BE is 20. And arc CD is 90. And I want to find this angle out here. An angle outside a circle. Uh, not much I can do until I, I have to introduce a segment or two. This one, actually. Let's show C, E it is. And when you do that, you get a couple of inscribed angles. I think we can know the measure of angle C. It's an inscribed angle, and we know the arc that it cuts. Angle C cuts arc B, E, and B, E was 20 degrees. Therefore, that inscribed angle, one half the arc it cuts, must be 10. But what about this angle? That angle at E is an inscribed angle, therefore one half the arc it cuts, and it cuts an arc of 90 degrees, therefore that angle's got to be 45. Now, let's think about this for a second. Here I got a triangle. I'm thinking about that exterior angle of a triangle. This 45 degree angle is an exterior angle of that shaded triangle. It must equal the sum of these remote interiors. This guy being 10, this guy must be 35, so they would add up to 45 together. I go with it to find the measure of angle A. It will be the big arc 90 minus the small arc 20 divided by 2. How's that going to work? If this, I know that angle, let me write this way, the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C is equal to the measure of angle C, E, D. I want to know about angle A. What can I tell you about the measure of angle C? Let me just do a little proof with you here. Measure of angle A plus. What could you know about the measure of angle C? Well, the measure of angle C is arc BE divided by 2. What could you tell me about the measure of angle CED? Angle CED, well, that's arc CD divided by 2. Now, if you want to solve this for the measure of angle A, you'll have to bring that BE to the other side. And that would make it become, I think I can write it right here best. The measure of angle A will equal CD over 2 minus BE over 2. Think about that for a moment longer, and you could write it as CD minus BE over 2. That's the way we're going to measure that angle. And that's pretty much what I was doing right here. 90 degrees minus 20 degrees. That gave me 70. Divide that by 2. That's a 35 degree angle. That's the measure of angle A. Let's look some more. Here's another angle formed by a couple of secants. And they tell me about this arc. UW is 30. This arc VX is 130. Find out about angle T. I can go right to this axiom, but let me let me instantiate why that works that way. If I were to show this segment, 
That gives me an exterior angle of a triangle. That angle, let me call it angle 1. This one's angle 2. We can call that one angle T. Isn't it true that the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle V? Oh, well, let's call, I can call that V, but I'll call it, I said 2. Let me call it angle 2. The measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle T. I want to know about the measure of angle T. I'll have to subtract the measure of angle 2 from both sides. The measure of angle 1 minus the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle T. But can you measure angle 1? Yes, I can. The measure of angle 1 is 1 half of arc Vx divided by 2 minus. What about the measure of angle 2? Well, angle 2 is an inscribed angle. 1 half the arc it cuts. Uw. This makes me think that if I choose to get this angle T outside this circle, it will be Vx, the big arc, minus Uw, the small arc that it cuts, divided by 2. So, let me go ahead and figure what that would have been. That's 130 minus 30. That's 100 divided by 2. So the measure of angle T here would have been 50. That's been us drawn reasonably to scale. I think that looks about right. Let's get a chance to practice that thought. How do you measure an angle formed by two secants? Well, I've been talking about that for a second. How would I get this angle Z? What would I do with the arcs that it cuts? The big arc, AB, minus the smaller arc, CD, divided by 2. There's the general statement. That's what you want to remember. Before I turn this page, if the angle's just somewhere inside the circle, you add them up and divide by 2, huh? But if the angle's outside the circle, you subtract the big arc minus the small arc and you divide by 2. That's pretty much what I learned so far. There's a couple other things to think about, though. Let's take a look here. How about an angle formed by a tangent? And a chord it tells me ahead of time that arc AZ, this, this arc, is 100 degrees. Find the measure of angle ZAT. It says you might try showing a diameter. I think I'll try that idea of showing that diameter. I'm going to try to go from here through X. I'm not going to try to make that look like it should. That should be perpendicular right there. The figure's not drawn perfectly, but let that be perpendicular if I went through the center of that circle. Now, ah, AT is tangent to the circle, so I do have a 90 right there. Now, let's get angle ZAT. I'm curious about this angle. If this goes to the center of the circle, this must be a semicircle. There's 180 degrees. If that's 180, then this must be 80 because this part was known to be 100. So could I find out about this angle? Yeah, that'd have to be 40, wouldn't it? An inscribed angle is one half the arc it cuts. Now I know that there's a 90 here, because this tangent must be perpendicular to the radius. Therefore, there's a 90 right there. So what about this angle? 40 and 50 making that 90. So that had to be a 50 degree angle. So I say to you ahead of time, hey, this angle, 50 degrees. How does it relate to the arc that it cuts? Formed by this tangent and this chord cuts this 100 degrees of arc. And I would tell you that a, an angle formed by a tangent and a chord is one half of the arc it cuts. That goes hand in hand to any angle that has a vertex on the circle itself is one half of the arc it cuts. I'm going to make a statement about that. The measure of angle ZAT. is one half of the arc that cuts. The measure of this angle is one half of arc ZA. That's the arc that it cuts. And I get a chance to practice that a little bit. Let's look at this. Arc BX is 130. Arc BY is 150. 
I like to figure out about this arc. I know the arcs of the full circle got up to 360, and there's just a single point touching right there, so that's not no arc at all. Those are 280. If I take that out of 360, I think that leaves 80 degrees right there. That would add up to 360. So now, let's find all these angles. We, uh -oh, I was supposed to find out about arc X, Y, it was 80. How about angle X, B, Y? That, this angle, now that's an inscribed angle, and it ought to be one half of the arc it cuts. Angle X, B, Y, 40 degrees. Angle X, B, A, X to B to A. Angle formed by a tangent and a chord is one half of the arc it cuts. Any angle whose vertex is on the circle is one half of the arc it cuts. That'd have to be 65 degrees. Angle. Ooh, well, I, I wish I could find out about this angle. Let me go ahead and do that. Then I'll look at the one that it asks about. That angle's got to be 75 degrees, huh? An angle with this vertex is on the circle formed by a tangent and a chord is one half the arc it cuts. That had to be 75. What I wanted to verify with you, that 75 degree angle, that 40 degree angle, and that 65 degree angle, it was up to 180, this linear group, and I'm seeing that they do. I got a 10 right there, carry the 1, yeah. I think they add up to 180, and I'm happy that those would add up to 180. Now I'll go figure it out about this angle, X, B, C. X to B to C. Well, it's an angle formed by a tangent and a chord, and it cuts this pretty big arc, doesn't it? That's 150 and 80 more, that's 230 degrees. And a half of 230 would be 115. And that's okay with me, because those two angles should have been supplementary, huh? Angle XBA being 65 should have been the supplement of this angle, because they make that linear pair together. Angles formed by a tangent and a secant. <laughs> it's getting pretty good. Here's a tangent to the circle, and here's a secant to the circle. And we're curious about this angle right there. It tells me that TC is 70. Employ that. And TD, this part, that's 90. And I'm curious about this angle A, outside the circle. I would like to get one of those exterior angles on a triangle, but I don't even have a triangle. Uh, I'm going to show TC from the point of tangency to point C. Now that's going to give me a couple angles to work with. That one and this one. And I hope you're catching that this this triangle right there, the one I'm shading, has this exterior angle. This angle is going to equal those two angles added up. Well, how big is that angle right there then? Uh, if this arc is 90, this is an inscribed angle. It's one half the arc it cuts. That'd have to be 45 degrees. I'm working toward angle A, that's what it asked me to do. Now, this angle at T, that angle right there, that's formed by a tangent and a chord. How do you measure an angle formed by a tangent and a chord? And I should have made a statement about that a minute ago. It's one half of the arc it cuts. So this angle at T should be one half of 70, that'd have to be 35 degrees. I'm here to tell you that this angle is an exterior angle on this blue triangle. It, it should equal the sum of the remote interiors. So this 45 should equal this 35 plus this angle A. I think angle A's gotta be 10. Here's how I would work it to get the angle outside a, tri outside a circle. The big arc 90 minus the small arc 70 divided by two. That would have given me 20 divided by two. That would have given me 10. That's a formula that will work every time. It says, show TC, and we did, and check those inscribed angles. Yep, that's what we did. And this is an exterior angle of a triangle. That'll equal those two angles added up. That made me think it was 10 degrees before, but here's a nice way to make that happen. Now let's get a chance to practice that thought. Here's another tangent and a secant. We're going to find out about angle P. Or QR, 50 degrees. Arc QS, 110 degrees. 
Uh, let's work in a couple different ways. Uh, just the generally from the formula, the measure of angle P ought to be the big arc. Angle P coming across here cuts a big arc and it cuts a smaller arc. The big arc, 110, minus the small arc, 50, divided by 2. That would give me 150 minus 110 minus 50 would be 60 divided by 2. That make me think it's 30 degrees. Well, let me just show you that if it really works out that way. If I were to show QR and try to pick up on a couple of angles that I could, that angle, that's an inscribed angle, the one at R. It ought to be one half the arc it cuts. It cuts an arc of 110 degrees, so it'd be 55 degrees there, wouldn't it? And this one at Q. That's formed by a tangent and a chord. That'll be one half the arc it cuts. It cuts an arc of 50 degrees. That angle's going to have to be 25. What you got to remember here, as we seek angle P, this is an exterior angle on that shaded triangle. This angle should equal those two angles added up. So I sure I have to, whatever angle P is, plus 25 is going to add up to 55. Yeah. 30 plus 25 does that up to 55, does it? So I'm happy with the thing we got working right there. I'll give you a generalized statement about that. How do you measure an angle formed by a secant, a tangent and a secant? Make that statement. Make it sketch like that. Here's a tangent, AT, and a secant, AC. How would you measure angle A? And happily, this works for any angle that's outside a circle. You subtract the arcs and divide by 2. But it'll be the bigger arc, which will be the further away arc. That'll be arc TC. Minus the closer arc and the smaller arc, TB. Divided by 2. How do you get an angle? Well, notice as you go over a couple of things, how do you measure an angle at the center of a circle? Same as the arc it cuts. Angle with its vertex at the center, same as the arc it cuts. Angle with its vertex on the circle, half the arc it cuts. Angle just somewhere inside the circle, but inside it, not at the center, not on the circle like this one, you add up the arcs and divide by two. What about an angle outside a circle? You subtract the arcs and divide by two. Angle formed by two secants, yeah. Get this angle outside the circle, you would subtract the arcs and divide by two. What else we know for sure? Ah, angle formed by a tangent and a chord, like this angle, one half of the arc it cuts. Any angle with its vertex on the circle is one half of the arc it cuts. Angles for, angle formed by tangent and a secant, subtract the arcs and divide by two, one half the difference in the arcs. So it's a lot of fun. And pretty soon you'll be taking quizzes that look like this and figuring all kind of angles and arcs. It'll be fun. I look forward to doing that kind of thing with you. Thank you for listening.